like I sit here and I really wonder like why the hell is no one sharing this information? Hey hello my name is Jojo and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome. <sighs> Alright, so there are some things that you learn when you're in grad school that really make you wonder why no one told you about them earlier. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times I have literally verbalized that question in the first year of my program. <laughs> like so many times, too many times for me to be okay with. I have learned so much this year that makes me so mad that I did not know about them earlier. Things that really could have made my life a lot easier. I mean, like as a student, like made my life as a student a lot easier. And then there are also things that like I kind of knew about already, but didn't really know or understand how much of a big deal they were until I started my program and realized, oh, like those things actually matter and I should probably care about them a little bit more. But literally like some of a lot of these things like i sit here and i really wonder like why the hell is no one sharing this information at least not with me it wasn't shared with me i don't know why it wasn't shared with me but shame on anyone who knew this information who interacted with me and did not tell me shame on you you're probably not watching this but shame on you <laughs> but the answer to that question is gatekeeping plain and simple gatekeeping information but we don't do gatekeeping around here we spread the wealth, we spread the information, we spread the resources, we spread everything that we know. So, <laughs> with that being said, today I'm going to share some of the information that I have learned about or have kind of rediscovered the importance of through the first year of my program that I kind of wish I had known about earlier and therefore could have done differently before I got to my PhD program. So number one, I wish I had read more about psychological theory. Now. Yes, I majored in psychology in undergrad. Yes, I took damn near every psychology class that was offered at my undergrad institution and passed with A's. And yes, I went through a psychology master's program. Did any of this help me when I got to my PhD program? No. <laughs> Once you start a clinical psych program a lot of the first year curriculum is very theory heavy because you're learning these therapeutic modalities that are why are y'all so rude today i'm just trying to film a video that's it anyway <laughs> yeah in your first year you're learning these therapeutic modalities that are grounded in these theories psychodynamic theory, cognitive behavioral theory, the list goes on and on and on. So unless your professors are wonderful enough to not assume <laughs> that you are already coming into the program with this foundational knowledge of what these theories are, the history behind them, kind of how they've morphed through the years to become what we know them as now, unless your professors do not make that assumption, it is so beneficial to do some reading on your own. I felt so lost at the start of my program because despite all of the psychology courses I have taken throughout my entire higher educational journey, none of those classes have ever really dove into these theories. And like, that was really shocking to me once I realized how little theoretical foundational knowledge I had. I really wish I had done more of this reading ahead of time but again like i really didn't know what phd curriculum was gonna be and so there was really no way for me to know that ahead of time but me now coming to the end of my first year realizing how important that foundational knowledge is i am telling you that it is really helpful if you start doing some of that reading on your own oh this is also a really good thing to do if you really want to start finding your like niche as like a future therapist um it's kind of like what my clinical director calls it building your psychology family tree kind of reading these different works and building your sense of who you may be as a therapist kind of 
these different approaches and theoretical backgrounds that you might bring into the room as a therapist with you. And that's like something that actually becomes really important for internship applications, but we are a few years away from that and I'm trying to think about that right now. So we are gonna come back to that in another video. Um, so yeah, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Number two, I wish I had I'm trying to find a nice way to say this. <laughs> reevaluating. I love, I realize I love the word reevaluate. I just, I've, I've been doing a lot of reflecting and reevaluating in my life this year, uh, like in the first year of my program. And I'm just really liking that word, reevaluate. I'm reevaluating everything. Um, but yeah, I really wish I had started reevaluating the people that I include in my support system sooner it may be hard to believe um because i'm a peer posting youtube videos every other week and i'm trying to be a therapist and whatnot um but i am actually not a very social person i'm very shy i'm very introverted i'm very quiet i always have been and so anyone who is in my like really close friend group or like my support system are people who found me and adopted me. <laughs> I don't like outwardly search for new friendships and new people to add to my support system. Like they kind of just find me and we click and then like I'm just like, they're just like a part of my crew now. But one thing, like I said, I have been doing a lot of in the first year of this program is just reflecting and reevaluating everything. And that includes the people in my support system, both personally and academically. Primarily in this case, I'm referring to academically. It is very important to seek out and surround yourself with genuine people who want to give you genuine support. And up until this year, I have kind of just been okay with who I kind of already had. And I was like, eh, that's good enough, I'm fine. No, no, <laughs> we're not doing that anymore. I have very recently begun to actively seek out people who foster spaces in which I feel safe and supported, who have occupied spaces where I am trying to enter, who have successfully maneuvered the obstacles that I am now having to come upon in my program and maneuver and all of these people they genuinely want to see me succeed in my academic endeavors and <laughs> i feel like i'm i feel like i'm going to cry we're not going to cry today um but it has just like lit a new fire under me in finding these people really women women of color in finding these women of color who just make me feel so supported and just everything that I up until this point didn't even realize I needed, you know? And as I find them, I am like removing all of the other people who just I realized were not giving me what I needed or not removing them, but limiting their like interaction with me. I wouldn't say I'm completely removing them, but limiting my interactions with them. And that has just been like a game changer for me. So yeah, 10 out of 10, highly recommend. Don't be afraid to switch up your roster, okay? Do it, do it now. And then continue to do it, but start now. <laughs> Number three, I wish I had started reading literature for my research sooner. As you may know, most clinical psych PhD programs require that you complete a master's thesis and a dissertation. Personally, I have known more or less what I wanted to research for a very long time. I pretty much came into my master's program two years ago knowing what I wanted to research and seeking out an advisor who could support that research, but I did not start like reading literature and doing my lit review for my thesis study until like my the beginning of my second year in my master's program which was the same semester i had to submit my research protocol <laughs> and that was a struggle 
doing a very thorough lit review is crucial for having a strong understanding of what has already been done in your field of research so that you can begin to identify gaps that your research in particular may be able to help fill. And you cannot do it well. I didn't feel like I could, but maybe I'm just a lazy bitch. <laughs> but it felt impossible to do what I felt like was a thorough lit review in the same semester that I had to submit my research protocol for approval. Like that just didn't seem possible for me. Um, and I don't feel like I did a thorough lit review. So I was stressed. So I would say start diving into the literature as soon as you can. As soon as you kind of have an idea of what you wanna do, start reading about it. Even if you don't really know what you wanna do and just have like a super vague idea, even more reason to start reading now. The more you can read, the earlier, the better. Number four, I wish I had joined psychology affinity groups. Psychology affinity groups are things like honor societies like Psychi uh, or like psychology associations like APA, APSI, and LPA. The list goes on and on and on. But this, this right here, this little bit of information, like why did nobody like why is this information hidden like so honor societies i knew about and for some reason just never really thought it was important to join didn't really think it mattered psychology associations are there right and we know about them but up until last year i did not know that you can join an association while you are still a student and the resources that some of these, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say some, I'm not gonna say all because I'm not a part of all of them, but the resources that these, organ, these associations can offer you as a student, I'm talking workshops, scholarships, fellowships, grant money, travel funds, all, all the monies, all the monies. Like, there are so many opportunities to apply for things like this when you are a part of these organizations and these associations. And I feel like it's not advertised enough to students. And I don't understand why. The only downside is that joining these associations and these honor societies does cost money. You do have annual dues, at least for the associations. I don't think the honor society, but the associations, you do have annual dues. However, the earlier in your academic career you are, the cheaper your dues are. So if you join one of these associations as an undergraduate psych major, your dues will probably be as low as like $20 for the year. And then as you progress through your academic and professional career, your, your dues increase. Um, but they start off for students like really low. So join if you can, take advantage of those resources because they are there and I feel like no one's talking about them enough. Join them if you can, please. They're so good. <laughs> and finally, number five, I wish I had attended more conferences. Conferences are like kind of a really great way to immerse yourself in research that's being done in areas that you're interested in. As an undergrad, I think I attended like one conference and then throughout my master's program and now the first year of my PhD program, I've still only attended like a few conferences that have been like virtual because of COVID, but I wish I had started attending conferences more often earlier, just because I feel like when I do, I learn so much. It's also a great way to like network and kind of start building like your sense of community in psychology because there are so many different areas of research and kind of finding your little like group of people who are all interested in the same thing as you like that's kind of cool <laughs> so yeah i really wish i had started going to conferences earlier um and like more often than i had again the downside to this is that conferences do cost money unless you are Presenting research at conferences, you do have to pay to attend, uh, at least for most conferences. There are conferences that are free. Literally all of the conferences I have attended were free. Um, and that's not gonna lie, the majority of the reason why I went. 
<laughs> but free conferences are also kind of limited in what they offer so i i really want to be more intentional about saving up money to attend like these bigger more inclusive conferences and also because the country is starting to open back up because apparently the pandemic's over i guess um <laughs> conferences are also starting to happen in person which also means that unless you live in the same state or city that a conference is happening you are most likely gonna have to travel which is even more money which is where those travel grants from those psychology associations come in handy yeah i mean money money it sucks but still if you can manage to start attending conferences i would recommend it because i wish i had and that's it those are probably not all and i'm sure i'll think of more after i'm done recording this but for now those are some of the things that i wish i had done differently prior to starting my phd program i hope some of that information is helpful to you if you knew about some of those things already i'm sorry if this video was just like a regurgitation of stuff you already knew <laughs> anyway thank you for watching especially if you made it all the way to the end i truly appreciate it uh leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos as always like comment subscribe and click that little notification bell so you don't miss my next upload and i'll see you in the next one